Hundreds of thousands of vehicles use our main roads every day, subjecting them to enormous strain and stresses. So it is essential that the materials used shall have durable, non-skid and dustless surfaces. Here is a familiar scene on one of our roads, where the road maker is at work and repairing a road fit for the ceaseless flow of modern traffic. It is a skilled job and none too pleasant. All kinds of materials are used in making our roads, but on this job, notice the use of pick, more generally known as lake aspect. For this one, natural asphalt is being used. How many passers-by realize where this asphalt comes from and how interesting is its origin? Many thousands of tons of this Trinidad Lake asphalt are exported every year to all parts of the world for use in connection with road and building construction. Here is another use for asphalt. These workers are making the roof of the University of London watertight. These are the shores of La Brea, Trinidad, showing the overflow of asphalt onto the seashore. It is the second largest island of the British West Indies, being situated well within the tropics, about seven miles off the coast of Venezuela in South America. It is about eight times the size of the Isle of Man. Here you see the location of the pitch lake the refinery and overhead conveyor down to the loading jetty, and to the right are the labourers' houses. We follow this light railway, along which come the wagons to be loaded with crude asphalt, to the famous Pitch Lake, which is an expanse of crude natural asphalt just over 100 acres in extent. The lake presents a busy scene, natives removing the chunks of asphalt and loading them into the wagons. The asphalt is easily cut by pickaxes and is dark brown in colour. Any part of the lake can be worked as the asphalt does not vary in consistency. It is fed by underground springs and is estimated to contain about six million tonnes. The surface looks stable enough, but in reality it is always slowly moving. In 24 hours, the holes made by the pits will fill in and unless the railway lines are relayed every two days, sink and discipline the pits. Accurate soundings have been taken, disclosing a maximum depth of 285 feet at the centre of the lake. At the present rate of mining, the supply should last about 400 years. When the wagons are loaded, they are assembled and coupled together. Then they are attached to a cable which will haul them up to the refinery. Here, the lumps of crude asphalt are tipped into large, open, steam-heated stills, which hold about 70 tons each. The moisture and other impurities are mostly removed in this process. When empty, the wagons are sent back to the lake for refilling. The asphalt is exported in barrels which are made at the refinery. The staves for these are imported from North America. Watch these workers at their job. A barrel is turned out every 10 seconds, completely staved, clamped, heated, trimmed, and swilled over with a white mixture. Firstly, a number of wooden staves are fitted loosely into a wooden hoop like this. Then each set is passed to a machine which pulls the tops of the staves close together, thus enabling the top hoop to be fixed on.
Barrels are heated over gas flames to make them shrink. This machine pushes the iron hoops on more securely. A groove is made in which to fit the bottom of the barrel. As the pitch sets firmly, lids are not required. The barrels are then swilled out in a mixture of mud and water to prevent the pitch sticking to it. They are rolled down on runways to the pouring floor. Here they are arranged into huge circles with thousands of other barrels waiting to be filled with pitch. Finally, the molten pitch is passed through several more filters before being poured into the barrel. This worker's job is a skilled and difficult one. Balancing on the rough edges of these barrels, he controls the flow of boiling hot pitch so accurately as to just fill each to the brim. When the pitch has set in the barrels, they are loaded onto an overhead conveyor, automatically weighed and sent on their journey down to the loading pier, which takes 20 minutes. The map shows the direct route taken by the conveyor from the refinery to the pier head. Here it passes the spot where in 1595 Sir Walter Raleigh landed and was the first to discover the huge lake of Aspen. In his diary, he wrote, We made trial of it in trimming our ship to be most excellent good, and melteth not with the sun as the pitch of Norway. This pier, which is over a third of a mile long, enables large ocean-going vessels to tie up alongside. Then comes the busy scene at the quay. Maneuvering the barrels into position and roping them for loading by train, which whisks them up and down into the hold of the ship. Now, four centuries after Sir Walter Raleigh, with the rapid growth of modern transport and the demand for dustless highways, this pitch has found many other uses besides the making of modern roads which carry the life of the cities in civilized countries all over the world and has created a huge new industry where before was only a barren shore.